Hi everyone, Simon Chapel here. I'm the Quit Alcohol Coach and as always I'm here to help you smash your sobriety. If you haven't checked out my Quit Drinking program yet, the website is on the top of this page and I would love you to check that out. You can do it free for 14 days to make sure it feels like a good fit. And also if you enjoy the videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday. You can subscribe by pressing the little red button on this page right now. But today I wanted to talk about why addiction is not the problem and why we need to heal our inner child. I know that sounds a bit deep, right? Of course addiction's the problem. I was addicted to drinking. I drank red wine every single day for over 20 years. I can only remember a handful of occasions when I didn't drink it. But on this journey of discovery since I quit alcohol, I've realised that it wasn't the addiction that was the problem. It was something that ran far deeper. And I believe from what I've learned and from what other experts have talked about in this field, that actually they're right. Addiction isn't necessarily the problem. And we need to look at what lays deeper. Now, of course, when we come to quit, we need to have the right tactics, the right support, the right structure, and the right tools to ensure that we can do that in a way that feels as comfortable as possible with a positive mindset, a feeling like we're not losing anything and we're gaining everything. But I feel that if we can get some light around that inner child piece that I'm gonna talk about in just a moment, it can make the whole thing so much easier because we have a sense of understanding. You have to remember, you weren't born addicted and neither was I, none of us were. This has come from somewhere and we found ourselves self-medicating trying to soothe ourselves to escape from pain. We might be suppressing pain, we might be in denial, or we might be avoiding pain altogether. But almost everybody that I coach with has some kind of trauma or hurt from their past. Now I've talked about trauma before. Uh, I don't want to drop this subject because it applies to almost everybody, I believe, that has developed a problem with alcohol or other kinds of substances. And by exploring it in a way that's not going to cause too much discomfort, you can bring things out into the light and get complete clarity on them. Once you've got clarity on them, you can deploy the tactics for dealing with them, specifically inner child based issues. This will all make sense in a minute, believe me, and I will also give you the solution that I've used in terms of how we deal with that and how to address it so that you do heal, you do move forward and continue to grow. And don't think of this as something negative, this is a wonderful part of that journey of self-discovery, of learning about ourselves and developing into the best version of ourselves that we can possibly be. During my adult life, I found myself turning to a number of things that I became addicted to. It started off with me dabbling in drugs, I also got into running and I was addicted to that. Work, I also became addicted to that, growing my business, working all hours, and of course, alcohol. And I, I often wondered, why can't I stop? Why do I have to be all or nothing with these things? Why can't I regulate them? And more importantly, why am I lacking pleasure in my life? Why don't I seem to be happy like other people? Where's the fun? Where's the joy? Why can't I stop this? Why can't I end the pain? And I went round and round in circles looking for that answer. I was reading just about every self-help book I could lay my hands on. I was looking at videos on YouTube, listening to podcasts, and believe me, I never really got to the bottom of it until I started to explore my past traumas, the things that had caused me pain, and digging into those in a bit more depth. And when I talk about trauma, it doesn't mean that you have to be a war veteran who's seen something horrendous in the Iraq war or suffered sexual abuse like I did. It could just be comments from your parents. And even just the example of parents who are really stressed out through their own lives, that can feed into a young child and make the child stress themselves and cause their brain to be wired in a particular way that then leads them to be stressed without even knowing about it. So we talk about trying to identify what those traumas are and sometimes it can be really hard to pin that down, to get an idea of it. But keep an open mind with this because it wasn't necessarily this huge pivotal moment. It could just be a stressful environment, parents that argued all the time, or something that was filtering down to make you feel unloved, unwanted, rejected, scared, stressed out, who knows, the list is endless. 
but try and get some clarity on that and bring it out into the light. And as I say, later on in the video, I will get on to the ways to actually deal with this for a really positive outcome so that you can continue your own journey of growth. And of course, like I said, those behaviors can manifest themselves in so many different ways, but almost without exception, we are using addictions to escape, to suppress, to run away from something essentially. You know, and it could be that we get addicted to gambling, alcohol, substances, porn, sex, fitness, religion, or work. But when bad things happen in our lives, we can be left feeling deficient, like we've got something missing. And that's where we try and fill the void, that's where we try and numb the pain. And as I say, almost without exception, I've seen that happen time and time again with the people that I work with. And when those things happen as a child, the parents arguing, the emotional abuse, the more serious events of sexual abuse or violence, whatever it might be, and when those bad things happen, no matter how minor they might seem right now, but even stressed out parents where that stress is radiating, the child thinks the bad things have happened because they're a bad person. And this leads to a sense of low self-esteem. And of course, a child who has a great life and things are going well and they're feeling wanted and a sense of love, when those good things happen, they become confident. They radiate positivity. But the opposite also applies. And it's important, as I say, as part of this process of digging to understand how that when those things happen, we need to explore what they are, we need to bring them out into the light and understand that that child has tried to soothe itself, it's tried to ease the pain. Because our brains are shaped by those early experiences. And even when we're in the womb, a stressed out mother can shape the brain of the child before it's even born. So you can be born stressed, can you believe that? And when I heard this stuff, it was a revelation to me. My own mother suffered a nervous breakdown and I think that had a huge effect on me. My father walked out on my mum and I when I was just two years old and I thought, well, how could that have possibly had an effect on me? But I now know it left me with PTSD. And so many of these things that I'm talking about are from my own experience. And now I'm experiencing the journey of recovering and healing. And I wanna share that with you because I'm seeing it in so, so many of the people I work with who've used alcohol as a coping mechanism. Essentially, as a child, I received a message that I'm not good enough. And I spent my entire life trying to please other people, trying to show that I was good enough, trying to be the best at everything I did. And I think this is why I became all or nothing. I wanted to grow my business as big as it could be. Did I do that to impress my mum? Maybe I did. I wanted to run marathons instead of just 5K. I ended up doing 16 marathons in like five years. All of these things were there to try and build my self-esteem, to boost my self-esteem. But I now realise that all I was doing was trying to avoid the actual reality of what happened when I was younger. And sure, some of it might not even seem like this huge, enormous life event. Some of it absolutely was. But I can now see how it shaped me as an individual as I've grown older. Now, you may have heard of Gabor Mate. If not, you need to look him up on YouTube. He's absolutely brilliant. And he talks so much more in depth about this. And he understands the science behind it way better than I ever will. And he talks about how this can even lead to physical illness, where a stressed child has a lower immune system, how there can be physiological effects from this kind of trauma, pain and hurt from the past that can lead to things like asthma, even cancers, so many different things. It can affect us in so many different ways. But of course, the main thing is mental health, low moods. For me, I've even got ADHD and he talks about how even that is something that can come into play when there has been trauma, pain and hurt in the past when you're younger. And of course, all that can come from a parent who's extremely stressed, and the child then tries to compensate. And of course, I try to compensate through alcohol, which can then lead to so many different diseases, illnesses, and mental health issues. So sure, if that's the proximate cause that is from hurt, pain, and trauma as a child, then absolutely, it was leading me down a path where I was probably gonna destroy my life. It certainly destroyed my mental health, and I'm so happy to be on a journey now where I'm rebuilding and I'm moving forward. But it's so important to understand how you were hurt. 
And I'm talking generally, not everyone watching this video will have suffered some kind of huge trauma. But in most cases, if you find that you're struggling with alcohol or any other kind of substance, there is going to be a cause and it's probably going to lay in something from your past. Some kind of unhealed hurt, unhealed pain. What does that look like? If you can bring that out into the light, you can start to look at how you're going to heal it. And that is the first step in this process. And I'm sure some people watching this will say, well, there's absolutely nothing from my past, Simon. I don't know what you're talking about. And you may need to dig deeper. Think about perhaps things that might seem relatively insignificant. Sometimes it can just be the case that you weren't acknowledged when you achieved something and that didn't make you feel so great. And then you weren't acknowledged again. And it might not seem like much, but as a child, that really does form who we go on to be. And it can leave you needing to soothe those wounds that you've been left with. So as well as the big episodes, as I've said, you need to look for the small stuff as well and actually identify where your inner child is coming into play, where you notice your inner child coming up. And I'll explain that in just a moment. But if you can notice where the inner child comes up, you can join the dots up by understanding what may well have caused that, what emotions are coming up, how things are making you feel. And these are the steps in terms of how to heal. The first thing is to notice your inner child. So for me, a lot of it is around rejection and a fear of abandonment. My father walked out on my mum and I when I was two years old and I've been left with rejection issues. So please do not stop watching this video because imagine what that will do to me. So. That is my issue and I notice my inner child reacting to things around that. So for example, if I ask my son, he's 15, for a hug and he says, no, I don't want a hug, he did it this morning. I feel it, I feel my inner child starting to rumble inside me and the reaction may not be a rational adult reaction and that's where you wanna notice. And if you have those sort of reactions, that is a sure sign that there's something going on in relation to your inner child, in relation to unhealed past hurt, pain or trauma. So identifying where the inner child comes from, noticing when the inner child appears and taking a moment, just pausing when you see that happening. So if you can notice the triggers, what is it that's causing the inner child to start talking? You can then identify the underlying emotions. What do they look like? And for me, that example of my son not giving me a hug, it's clear to me that it, it's rejection. Rejection and a, abandon, a wider abandonment issue. So what does it look like for you? Where does it come up? And it can come in all different shapes and sizes. And as I say, you can then rewind that and think about, okay, what does this feel? What is it I want right now? I want to be hugged. I want to, be, I want to feel wanted. Think about it in your own example. And if you're sat there shaking your head thinking there's absolutely nothing going on, yet you do have these reactions, you need to get them down in writing and you need to spend some time exploring them in a bit more depth and trying to join up the dots around where that's coming from. What is it that's made you feel like that? How do you feel in the moment? And the next question to ask yourself is what do I need right now? What does that child need? What does it want? So in my example of a hug, it is exactly that. I want to be wanted. I don't want to be rejected. And then another step to healing and starting to manage this is understanding where you can find that. So if my son rejects me, first of all, I notice my inner child saying, he doesn't want a hug now, he's rejecting you. Before I allow my inner child to take over, I can feel wanted if I go and hug my wife. I can feel wanted in a number of other ways, maybe connecting with a friend, giving them a call and knowing that they feel pleased to hear from me. They want to talk to me. Maybe my son doesn't right now, but they certainly do. So you can find that and have some go-tos to get that same thing that your inner child wants at that time so that you can use it as a tool when the inner child starts to scream and make noise inside of you. In addition, it's important to know who's talking in that moment. So when you feel your inner child talking, it can be worth just pausing for a second and actually asking yourself, who is this talking now? Is it me, the adult, or is it my inner child? 
When you ask yourself that question, it can quickly snap you out of it and put you back into adult mode. Instead of it being little Simon kicking off, throwing his toys out of the pram, we're back to adult Simon again. And that's really important to pay attention to. And also, not just who is talking now, who are you talking to now? Not just who's talking now, but who are you talking to now? So maybe when I feel that sense of rejection, it's not the person in front of me who my inner child is talking to. Maybe it's my dad who walked out on me at two years old that I'm talking to. And when I recognize that, I can pause, I can look at it, and I feel like I can step back from the situation and bring the adult back into play. So the important thing in all of this is becoming aware when it's happening, noticing where it's coming from, taking steps to find where you can get what it is your inner child is craving at that time, what the triggers are for it, and then making sure you actually call it out and say, who are you talking to now? Who is it doing the talking now? That's not the adult you, is it, Simon? And then pulling yourself back into the adult mood. And this is all coming from a wounded part of myself. And if you're nodding your head and you've noticed this going on from you, a wounded part of you that's probably never been truly healed. But the fact is we can heal. We've got a choice in these situations. When we notice, we can make a conscious choice and we can make a decision that we're going to leave that situation where the inner child has come up feeling empowered, feeling positive, not feeling like we've been overwhelmed by emotions. And I truly believe that so many people's addictions stem from something much, much deeper than just alcohol is an addictive substance. I started using alcohol and then I was using it every day and now I can't stop. Sure, that's the surface level. I want you to peel back the layers of the onion and I want you to get to the very heart of the matter and understand where this came from in the first place. If we can silence the inner child or soothe the inner child in the right way, not with alcohol or drugs or gambling or porn or shopping addictions, if we can soothe it in the right way where it feels like it's getting what it needs and our partners around us and our family and our friends know that we need certain things, that we feel good when we're hugged, then you can keep that inner child really, really happy. And sure, it takes practice, and there's gonna be some bumps in the road doing this. Believe me, I've struggled with it, and I've worked my way through it, and I certainly wouldn't say I'm anywhere near perfect, but I'm getting there, and that's why I'm sharing this stuff with you, because I've seen great growth and massive improvements by bringing all of this out into the light. And I want that for you, because I do find with so many cases, that there are things from the past. This isn't just about, I started drinking as a teenager because my friends did it, and then I went on to a lifetime of addiction, and now I'm in my 50s. This, there's normally more to it, and there's normally something there where we didn't feel appreciated, wanted, loved, needed, cared for, whatever it might be. And if you can get some clarity on that, you can start seeing this from a completely different perspective and understand that this isn't you, this was the way you were shaped, but you can change. You can start to become aware of that inner child. You can start to make it easier on yourself. But if you don't ever understand this, your inner child is gonna keep on exploding inside of you, screaming out, having tantrums, and you're not gonna know how to silence it. And there's a bunch of amazing videos from some amazing people all over the internet. Gabor Mate is the man to look up. I'll put his name in the description of this video. He is a renowned world leader on this subject, and I'm certainly not putting myself out there as that. But with alcohol and quitting drinking, it's all very well having the tactics, the tips, support, accountability, and the strategies. But I feel this runs deeper. I feel that we've got to look at these things. And we're not doing ourselves the justice, the self-love we owe to ourselves if we don't look at that bigger picture. And so many of the kind of programs and coaching things that I look at don't really go that deep. They scrape the surface, they give the tactics, but they don't really look much deeper. And if we don't bring this stuff out into the light, it's always gonna stay in the dark. And sure, it feels like we're looking in a dark place, but believe me, there's some gifts in that dark place. We've just got to look into the darkness and know that we will find the light in there, because you will. But until you face the darkness and the uncomfortable stuff, you're forever gonna be suppressing it or running away from it. And what do we do when we do that? We tend to use substances. We tend to switch one addiction for another and we never truly heal it. 
And of course, psychotherapy can be a great option for healing trauma. And I absolutely advocate that as an option. But there are some things you can do right now and start to see how that feels for you. If you can start becoming aware of your inner child, start to really feel what the inner child needs and make sure you're getting that understand what's triggering you and try and leave those situations with a positive on the up feeling empowered and you should be starting to make some excellent progress walking down that path and once you know this you can never unlearn it you're going to recognize it you're going to know it's there that's when you can start expanding your knowledge about it looking at some of the other videos reading books i can recommend plenty of those too and discovering what steps you can take on the path to truly healing because absolutely quitting drinking for me has been a journey of self-growth self-discovery learning about myself and it's been a wonderful journey and this is part of that journey so i want to share it with you and i want to make sure that you go on that path too and actually enjoy it know that you're bringing some incredible things out into the light that are going to help you grow and develop and blossom as a person and as i say if you've enjoyed the video there's new ones every tuesday every thursday please subscribe to the channel we've got a wonderful community here on youtube and if you want to follow me on instagram you can do so right there be sober and quit i would love you to be part of that community too and as i say there's new videos every week so until the next time i'll see you soon